Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the meeting. Um, let's see. I think, who else do we have out? Do we have Neil out there? Uh, we do. Neil Toman is on, yes. Um, would you, you guys like to just hear what Neil, you want to hear briefly what Neil has to say so he can uh, move on to other important matters? Sure. Sure. I just uh, brought him in. Neil, are you there? Neil? Mute, Neil. And soon. How's that? There we go. Hi, Neil. How are you? Okay, thanks. Let me see. Can you see? You can't see me. No, I cannot see you. Okay, sorry to hold you up here. There you okay. go. Okay. All right. Neil, welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Let me turn it, let me get my volume up here. Sorry about the late notice. Uh, and appreciate you letting me slide in here. Uh, I've got a, um, a couple of slides that I'd like to do some screen sharing with, and I'm going to try and keep this short. Um, so I'm going to go to screen share. You can check and see. Okay. How's that? Well, we can see that. Okay. So, um, I have a, a repair that I need to do at Jordan Dam <clears throat> up, up here at Glenwood. And I have filed the Article 15 application with the DEC. And uh, we've got, we've been, it's been going back and forth a couple of times making revisions and I think we're finally, we've, we finally submitted it and I'm in communications with them. They're saying, yes, everything's okay. It's just going to take a little, little bit of time to review it. So what I'm trying to do is, um, I mean, the conservation board would be the next stop. So I'm, I wanted to try and bring this and give you an overview prior to, the hopefully the approval. <clears throat> okay. and, uh, I should actually back up. I'm, I'm Neil Tolman. I'm the director of facilities here at Glenwood. And uh, so let's let's jump right into it. I've given you uh, I just get every let everybody get their bearings. Can I just interrupt you for a second, Neil? This is MJ Martin. Um, do we have other folks, Kelly, waiting who are on the agenda to do their to present? Yeah, there's other people here, yes. Okay, because I'm just wondering, I, I thought I, I was I was under the impression that Neil was going to talk to us about something related to the planning board. I didn't realize that. I, I don't know how everybody else feels, but if we had people on the agenda, yeah. I, mean, MJ, I, I feel I, like it's not very courteous for us to, to just jump to something that's not on the agenda. That's I understand, MJ. I uh, my understanding from Kelly was it was a sort of a short intro, and I thought we'd let Neil get going. But if it's uh, an in-depth uh, proposal or I should say presentation, Neil, if you wouldn't mind, it is it is going? How long do you think it's going to take to go through your? Oh, uh, ten minutes. Um, well, you know what? If, would you mind if we jumped in? I think we can get through the three other people that are on here very quickly. Two of them don't even have a presentation, and absolutely, absolutely. I totally, totally get it. Yeah, very good, Neil. Thank okay. you for your patience. Yep. Thanks, I, I appreciate you. No, no, yeah, I, I, I see where you're coming from. Absolutely. Okay, so let's do. Uh, is did Glenn come in with anything from Riverview? Um, Glenn is not on, and he has not given anything for Riverview. Okay. Let's just move on then. Uh, is Chloe out there? I don't see Chloe on, not yet. You see what I mean, Neil? <laughs> well, this may happen very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about Terry Young, Avery Road? Um, that would be Schmidt. Uh, Christopher, yes. Give me one second. Christopher, are you there? Chris, 
Christopher. Yes. Good evening. How are you? Good. How are you? Great. Oh, oh close. Hi, Chris. Hello. How's everybody doing tonight? All right. So, uh, have you come up with a revised proposal? Yes. Um, so we did put together a revised plan, um, you know, based off of some of the information that we, you know, gathered when we were on the site visit together. Um, did you guys get a chance to see the plan? Or would you like me to share my screen now to see that? That would be great if you could share it. Okay. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you guys remember the property um, as well, um, but what we did was we uh, we did slide the pool back. Um, or do I need to do official introduction first, or are we good with? Um, no, I think you can go. I, I, okay. I mean, I, MJ, I know you didn't see it. Um, Crystal, you didn't see it. Are you okay if we just move into it? Yeah, go right in. I'm familiar with the area. Great. Okay, great. Um, so as you remember from the previous plan, which I'll show here, we did, um, we had the pool and the infinity edge catch basin much closer, uh, 17 foot three and 19 uh, feet to the water's edge. We have revised um, the plan to pull everything back um, here. And I know that on site, we discussed moving it behind the front plan of the house. Um, I just want you to know, we didn't, you know, come to this revised plan, you know, just by happenstance, we did look at many different things. Um, some of them being, you know, the overall amount of disturbance, excavation, grading, um, trying to maintain the existing uh, vegetation that is down on the side. Um, as I had mentioned the max to limiting the amount of disturbance um, in regards to the utilities that run from the house out to the shed from the propane tank over here that runs the house and the generator. Um, so there are several utilities that we, you know, since being on site have learned that are all in this upper area where we had discussed possibly putting the, the pool um, in there. And also in redesigning it and taking a look at what would be involved with locating the pool in this upper section and, and moving the spa and lowering the grade and, and retaining walls, we were actually going to have about 40% more um, area of disturbance than what we have now. Um, so really when we were looking at the options and, and where we felt would be the, the least intrusive place to put it, we still felt that being on this lower level here was still less disturbance overall in the wetland buffer. Um, you know, right now it's showing about 2,800 square feet of, uh, of disturbance through here. And I know one of the major concerns when we were there was, you know, what to do with runoff how to prevent, you know, any silt, you know, from entering the stream. Um, and I think, you know, there's ways to mitigate that with silt fence, hay bales, and another layer of silt fence, um, you know, just to maintain the site and keep everything clean out of the brook there as well. And, you know, the other major thing is, you know, obviously when we were on site, we saw how close it was. And, and this does, you know, almost double the distance from here and more than double it from you know, the native part of the brook here, which isn't man-made from this section where these walls were built in. Um, you know, so again, overall, you know, just in, in looking at you know, the different locations for it, we, we still feel that down on this level coming in you know, from the driveway is just gonna be the, the best overall you know, for limiting disturbance, as well as also maintaining a connection to the back of the house um, for usability for the homeowner. Um, and so, you know, really what I wanted to do tonight was, was show this to you guys, get some feedback on your thoughts and, and see if some of those ways of mitigating it with the maintaining the erosion controls, you know, we could do something like that. Um, let me ask you the utilities you, that you described running through, uh, you know, over towards the hot tub, what, what does that consist of? So there's the feed for the hot tub itself, and there's also a buried propane tank, um, which is over here. There's the well, um, which runs into the house from here, and there's you know small electric to the shed. Um, you know none of these lines are marked, um, so they're not you know 
easily locatable, but we do know that they run all you know within this area where we looked at doing excavation. Okay. All right. I think um, I guess would anybody like to start the commenting on this? I, I guess I will. Um, on the whole, we don't allow building in a wetland buffer, particularly for something that's not essential. Um, so I, I myself am not really comfortable with the revised plan. I don't really think much has been done. That's my feeling. Thank you, Andy. Jan? Uh, I think Andy's correct. It's very hard to say that if we're going to approve this, there's anything in the future that this board could not approve. And when I think about how we've struggled over the last few years over some of these things that were really essential as opposed to what I'd call discretionary, I think this is really hard to, um, it's, just, it's just hard to do. Thanks, yeah. MJ, you wanna, or actually Rob, you were there, what do you think? Is Bob still in? Yep, there he is. Bob, you're on mute, I think. The mute sign does not seem to be up, but we cannot hear you. It's having an issue. All right. Well, while we figure that one out, Crystal or MJ, you want to chime in? Crystal, you want to go ahead? Really hard time hearing you, Crystal. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? It's the first time I've missed my son's headset. Can you hear me? Not working. Sorry, not working. Oh, that. Yep. Okay. Sorry. Um, no, I just I kind of. Put the phone a little bit in your mouth. Yep, just right there. Sorry. Good. That'll work. Um, so, I also my that was sort of my my feeling as well um, that. Thank you, Crystal. MJ, can you jump in? Uh, sure. It's not going to be anything that anybody doesn't expect from me over the last <laughs> more than a decade on this board. I, I am, I am never for pools, tennis courts, and other non-essential items being constructed within a 100 wet, 100 foot wetland buffer. So I think, you know, Andy speaks my mind on this. Thank you. Well, I mean, I, I have to agree with everyone, uh, you know, understood, understanding that it's difficult to try to put it around where we had asked, even where we had asked or suggested, I shouldn't say asked, we had suggested possibly would be a really enormous give on our part. And I think the Jan's point about if we allow a completely non-essential thing like this that close to the stream, uh, we're not doing our jobs. So I would have to agree that I don't think we could, we couldn't approve it as it is now. So I, I guess, um, you know, so, you know, I'm a little bit surprised, not, you know, I appreciate the feedback, first of all, but I mean, because we did look at the other locations, but if it is just a non buildable project inside the buffer, um, you know, I mean, obviously you can see the hardships that were here and there was a house built within a buffer, you know, it's, there's obvious hardship and there's not really another location on the site um, in order to install the pool. You know, I feel like the main reason to protect the wetland is from any future damage, right? And, and you know, given what the area is now, it's not like we're encroaching up upon 
you know, any protected land, it's, it's currently long. Um, so, I mean, I guess I would look to the board for a suggestion of, is it nothing with inside the buffer or is it only in the location that we discussed on site? I mean, you can see where the, the buffer basically is the front of the house and we did walk up, you know, we all walked up into that area in the woods which would get you out of the buffer. It has its own downsides. I'm not sure about the setback requirements. You know, you've got a privacy issue with the neighbor looking from up there up the hill a little ways. But I mean, physically, it does seem like there is a spot that you could put it. It's not optimal, but, you know, arguing that there is no other place to put it, unfortunately, I don't think is a valid argument in this case. Well, I think it's a trade-off of, you know, taking up lawn space as opposed to removing, you know, 30 to 40 trees. Um, I think that's an exaggeration, quite honestly. I mean, what we looked at were there were two to three pretty large trees, but I, I, I quite I don't really recall what species they were. Right. And I if I believe one of them may have been a Norway maple, which is an invasive anyway. That's that's that don't hold me to that. I, I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. But, well, I think, well, I mean, there's, yes, I mean, there's the area for the footprint of the pool itself, but then, you know, obviously we'd want to get, you know, sunlight in, you know, um, right. you know, not, you know, have the pool be there plus the slope uh, that's there as well, um, you know, which is one of the reasons why, I mean, I, you know, obviously we, we understand the wetland setbacks, we understand the reasons behind it. Um, and I think, you know, we, we are coming to the board to yeah, you know, you see what the possibilities are, but you know, from right now, it seems as though there's a there's a no build within the hundred foot wetland buffer. That's pretty much a standard our standard modus operandi. I mean, if it's if it's there's no other place to put an absolutely essential thing, a septic, for example, whatever there, you know, then we have to consider all options, and 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 in that case, we make. We do everything we can do to to minimize the impact. Um, this thing is is just so unbelievably close. It's increasing the 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 problem already. The house, it's what do they call it? Existing non-conforming. It's it, increasing the non-conformity, and that's that's a big no-no. So I mean, I, I don't. I'm not being facetious, but could you put the pool up on top of the house? Uh, not without severe structural upgrades to the house, um, it'd be cost prohibitive. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can do it. Um, I mean, I'm a builder. I'm, I'm again. I'm not being facetious, but no. I, yeah, I understand. But I mean, it's you know the the you know there are you know cost implications to everything, right? Um, right. You know, which I think it's. Can you hear me, Bob? You're in. Yes, please. Um. Chime in. All right. I, yeah, I had trouble with the password. It seemed like my phone connected. I heard you, but I guess I, it wasn't fully connected. But I'm on the computer now. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, we went over a lot of options of where you could put, you know, things that maybe would be more acceptable. I mean, we didn't really commit to anything. Um, we were just, we told you very clearly that, you know, we were really against this property being so close to the, the wetlands already to, to do anything even closer. And, um, you know, I think that was very clear that that was a direct ask not to encroach in that space, which for whatever reason you chose to propose again. Um, so yeah, I, I would definitely be against it. I mean, again, you can't always get what you want and it's a beautiful house as is, maybe you don't need a pool and that maybe just have to be acceptable. You know, uh, I, I, you know, not everything is fair you know i mean you can't always get what you want so i don't think the pool in that location is acceptable we have proposed other locations um you know come back with another proposal well and that's what so i mean i guess what i'd like to get out of this then is if i could get some more direction i mean i know what we spoke about bob on site i didn't you know disregard what we had discussed in you know our new location you know with figuring out some of the other utilities and other items that were in there um, so, well, let me I guess what I don't want to do is like keep coming back and just keep working our way up the slope. Um, right. I understand what you're saying, but when we left the meeting, the, in, the, what we indicated was if you could keep it behind the first, the closest point of the house to the stream, 
Right. And you, that would put you, you have now not done that. You have put it in front of the house. So to say that it's, you know, you're having to keep coming back. No, you, no. I, I didn't mean like that. Maybe there's some misunderstanding too. When I emailed this down to Max, um, you know, I, I was hoping for a cursory review first. Um, you know, and I understand, you know, what you guys had asked. Um, you know, so I wasn't just yeah. disregarding it, like I said. Right. Um, we had looked at other things. The client had asked me to try again um, with, you know, other options and, and different things. And, you know, I guess what I'm saying, what I, what I meant uh, when I said that was that I don't want, you know, now move it to this location to come back to say, hey, you're still within the 100 foot buffer. So it just needs to go in this location. I mean, you know, I guess is, is what where I, my I, suggestion would be uh, find a place where it's completely out of the buffer and, you know, do your cost analysis and decide if it's worth it for you to do that. And then if you can put it someplace where it may slightly encroach on the buffer slightly, but is behind the house and the house represents a substantial, substantially more of, of a intrusion into the buffer. So the pool, the additional intrusion of the pool can be seen by everyone as really minimal. Then I, I personally would be willing to look at it again. Okay. Anybody else? I apologize. I've lost track of who's uh, speaking right now. I'm sorry. It's Mark Leza, the chair. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Anybody? Well, let me, um, you know, let me speak to Mr. Young and see, you know, give him the feedback, you know, from the board, and I can, I can do that. Is there, you know, because I guess the other thing I'd like to look at, and I'm not sure if it's something that would be considered, is the amount of grading and disturbance even up bordering the buffer and the tree removal there um, in finding a new location? It, everything would be considered. You know, I mean, you, you, I would say that my own opinion at this point is that the letter of the law, you know, the 100 foot buffer is, is a sacred thing. And once you get out of that, you know, removing trees as necessary is something to be discussed. And Maybe you can move it, it, put it in such a way that you have to, you can minim, you show that you've minimized the removal of the trees as best you can. You've been forced to put it out in this area where there's going to be more grading, there's going to be more tree damage, but you're, you're even within that context, you're doing the best you can within that area to minimize it. That, that to me is a, is a compromise. Right. No, by all means, I mean, you know, we're, you know, sensitive to the environment and the industry that I'm in and, and we want to protect them as much as we can. Yeah. So no, I'm sorry, Chris. I mean, I, and I have to say, I agree with Bob. I mean, I think everybody thought when we saw it, it's, it's a stunning project. I mean, it, I would love to see it. It's, it's going to be beautiful, but it's just, unfortunately, it's just too close to that stream. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I understand. Thanks. Again, I uh, appreciate everybody's time tonight. And um, is there a way to get plans prior to a meeting, um, you know, reviewed? Sort of like a working session, or is that something that's? I mean, if you uh, send it send it to Kelly, she can get it to, to us, and we can certainly look at it and give you some prelimin preliminary feedback. I, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'd, I'd greatly appreciate that. So let me talk to Mr. Young and and tell him, uh, like I said, you know what happened tonight, and we can look at that, and hopefully in the next go round, if there is one, then it'll be something that we're all in uh, in agreement on. All right. Thank you, Chris. Very okay. much. Okay. All right. Thank you. Have a great night. All right. Um, shall we? Is anyone from the Fish Library here? Um, Chloe's on. If you wanted to do. Oh hi. yeah, let's let's say hi to Chloe. Hi, Chloe. I just let her in. Chloe, are you there? I just wanted to let everybody know ahead of time. I'm going to recuse myself from this one. MJ and Crystal, you weren't. Uh, you didn't hear this from last time, but Chloe is a good friend of my daughter, so. Um, uh, I did actually speak to Chloe uh, at one point and just give her uh, some feedback on our site visit. And, and she actually came back with some good suggestions. So Chloe, if you're there, fill them in on what you were thinking. Chloe? 
Oh, you're muted. All right, there we go. <laughs> Hi, Chloe. Hi, Chloe. So, I apologize for being late. I got out of uh, work late. Um, no problem. Did you hear uh, my introduction? Yes, I did. So um, as Mr. Glazer said, uh, we did talk previously um, for the for both looking into the well and the septic, um, what our plan is, and if this works for you guys, um, we can move forward with that is we are, I already have a plumber in line, a certified plumber who is going to come onto the site. He is going to um, essentially drain the well, check to make sure everything works, check to make, see how much water is in it, the depth that's in it. And while we're doing that, we're going to be pumping that water into the septic tank to do a dye test to make sure that the septic system all works um, and to figure out for exactly where the fields and the pits are. Um, as the plans that I emailed to you guys, they were, um, even though they were uh, given and uh, even though they were stamped by the county, it was a hand-drawn map, so I want to make sure everything exactly is where it is for you guys. So we're going to make sure, test everything, open everything up, and uh, check with the dye test. Um, we're just trying to coordinate between the plumber and if we have to use, um, if you guys want us to use septic people or an engineer or if it's something that we could do on our own, we're definitely going to have the... Um, the certified plumber there, it's just a matter of uh, scheduling to get both of them there on site at once to be able to check everything out. Yeah, I mean, I think when we were on site, can you hear me? Actually, yeah. uh, when we were on site and looked at the situation that was there, we felt there was a much more favorable spot to build back further and that you were really limiting your opportunities and even like the future of the, the home that would be there by, by trying to commit to that, that same footprint. So we were thinking that um, kind of starting with a green slate, you know, and abandoning the septic and potentially the well and moving the septic uh, back further and, you know, kind of changing the, the, the thought process around just replacing the house as is given the footprint there, because um, that's a really old septic from what was visible and, and just given the hand-drawn nature of the plans. And we probably, you don't really have even a formal septic there. It might just be a couple of, uh, you know, uh, trenches. So, you know, again, the dye test is one thing, but it's almost like you need to go in there with a boroscope and kind of really see where everything is, which I think I mentioned the last time which I don't think is expensive, but, you know, before you invest any money doing it, any of that, you know, maybe just kind of going out there on a Saturday afternoon with the nice warm weather and just kind of rethinking what might else be possible um, rather than rushing in and trying to conserve, you know, two pieces of infrastructure, but, you know, you're spending an awful lot more money trying to conserve those infrastructure and maybe you're limiting yourself because of that. Um, so for that, I absolutely understand what you're saying. Um, the reason why we want to keep it to that footprint is because all that ground where the house is going is already pre-disturbed from where the house originally was, when the house was torn down, um, and all of that area. If we were to move it back, we're having to drill I, I don't know exactly how it goes, whether we have to drill or blast rock because directly behind where that wall was, where that retaining wall was, that's all ledge rock um, from that mountain. And if you go in back, it actually goes, the mountain's right back there. But that's, uh, if you go down even half a foot, you're hitting stone and you're hitting ground and uh, ledge. So that was part of the reason was not wanting to disturb areas that haven't been touched. I mean, you, we have a shed that's on rocks in the back that's, that's not even right. disturbing anything back there. So we we're more trying to keep it in already disturbed areas that have been moved around and everything like that versus 
disturbing more land. Right. Well, there didn't seem to be much left <laughs> of the foundation. Well, in fact, I don't think we ever found the foundation. So um, I know we saw the, the stone wall, which was part of the garage probably underneath the house or whatever, but but obviously, you know, property like that, you're not gonna have a basement anyway. Um, but I, anyway, I, that, that, was our, that was our general thought that it would be much uh, better um, to get that septic, that historic septic out of the wetlands. I mean, it's directly in the buffer area. We don't really know the quality of the septic. It's a pretty old design, probably substandard um, and could be, you know, a lot of, a lot of problems down the road. So that, that was kind of our first thought that, that, that there could be a better design. Um, and, you know, even with rock and blasting, I mean, Marcus, you're a builder, you know more how, of an issue that would be, but uh, we, we thought when we were in the field that there was some better spots. Does the septic have to be recertified? It already was recertified by the county. They already did the, um, the bedroom count for it. And what's in place right now is there's a thousand gallon concrete tank. Um, that is what the county required us to have and that's already in place um, I in the packets that were sent out I also it may it might be hard to he see but that was the bedroom I know it's probably really hard to see on there no, I just I should have it in my papers yeah so we we have the um, the approval for that um, from the bedroom count and when a previous owner, they were uh, thinking about building um, a house on the property. They had also gotten it approved by the county with that same septic. Um, and their only requirement again was to have that thousand gallon concrete tank. So, so you, that, 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 sorry, Andy, that approval from the county, is that current or was that from like two, like a few years ago? Uh, the, the last copy that I have from the county that was approved in 2019 and expires in 2021. And is that a, re a repair permit? Um, for the county, the county is considering this entire property a addition they're not considering it a new construction due to the infrastructure that's already there. And were they provided, what were they provided in terms of the application they um, were, to their department? They were provided um, site plans for the house and the structure of the house. And then also they already had um, the septic information. I did try and foil to see if they had any additional information on both the sweat, uh, the well and the septic, but everything that I have is what they have. They didn't have anything on the well. So they just, they were going off the hand-drawn information plus the generic layout of the, the building that you, the, what you provided us is more of the architectural drawings. Yeah. Right? And then, okay. um, also off of the, um, off of their, sewage disposal system repair that they approved from the Gallagher's, which were two owners before us. And off of, um, there was a proposal for another uh, septic system repair for if the last owners had it, but the repair was for a thousand gallon tank. And when they dug up the tank, it was a thousand gallon tank. So the with that, with the approval for the plans that didn't go through, along with the approvals from the Gallagher's that were actually done, and with the drawings that we submitted to them, um, that's what they approved it on. I just out of curiosity, are they aware that it's in, in the wetland buffer? Just because it's not shown on any of the, uh, the drawings that were previously approved by them, especially the hand-drawn one. Um, I, to be honest, I am not 100%. I believe they are just because they have received everything that um, plans wise. So I, I would assume they are, but I can't give a thousand percent on that just because I, I don't know what they specifically looked at. 
I mean, those are my, that's my biggest concern with these repair or addition permits is that they're not really fully informed of what the site looks like unless they go out there or have a very detailed site plan. We um, did, I, I don't mean to interrupt, I apologize. We did have someone from the county who gave us our approval. They did come out onto the site and visually verified along with a uh, contractor about the tank. Okay, but not 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 the functionality of the tank. Not the functionality, um, because they knew it was functioning before the original house burned down, but that it was there and it was up to their standards. But my concern is not the tank; it's the leaching field. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, which, which and that's I'm not getting that tested. What's that? And that's why we're going to get it tested, uh, see what's going on in there, and. Uh, do a dye test to see if there are any leaks or anything else. I guess my question is what if what if the what if it fails is is the next what's your next step? If it fails, we move on to the next step of whatever we have to do. Um I I have high confidence that it will not fail, but um we'll take whatever necessary steps. I mean, I think if you're, you know, insisting that this is the only approach and you won't consider, you know, just abandoning that septic system, which I think I would recommend highly, then I would say that we need to, to bring up, you know, I mean, we can't have properties that are going to be continually, you know, putting repairs into septic systems without complete drawings. So if you don't have complete drawings that demonstrate that it's truly in the wetlands, um, then we're going to need to have that put together somehow. So maybe a visual inspection with a boroscope and an engineer to kind of come back and put together some plans, maybe doing some, some you know, digging to find some markers on it and just kind of get the, foot, the full footprints. Because quite frankly, I, I'm not really sure what the fields look like, how far they go out. You know, maybe the dye test will show they're working or it's working, maybe it won't. Um, but I, I, I'm just not comfortable that we've got virtually nothing left and that's the whole foundation of the project <laughs> and it's a being everything else is an addition to uh, an antiquated septic system that no one has any idea whether it works up until now the prior owner didn't even know the size of the tank so i just feel that that's not a good foundation to be building a house on um but i you know it's it's your decision but like i don't really think that that's the most appropriate way. I think, you know, kind of coming up with a, a more reasonable uh, kind of footprint and maybe rethinking the, the location, you know, again, might be the better way to go. But uh, I, I think that's definitely the approach. I agree with Rob. I think at the very least, an engineer needs to draw up a plan of the existing system, not only just testing it because I think we really need to see where it is in terms of the wetland, the stream. I can absolutely do that. Absolutely. I think I think if something also important during that process is to while they're there, maybe have the, start that discussion of finding alternative locations to place us a, a, a waste right. treatment um, system on your property as well. Just in case worse comes to worse, so you're not spending all that time and money um, and getting a minimal amount of information back. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's that's definitely a good idea. Yep, makes sense. Okay. All right. I'm not sure if, where I should jump back in here, but uh, if I'd say. Yeah, if I can, I, I, I'm not sure where the where the line is drawn here, but I, I might make one other suggestion to you, Chloe, and that is, you know, see about repairing the septic up to like 100% standards. You know, the, the and as Andy said, it's the fields that are nobody really cares about the tank as long as it's not leaking. Okay. So, uh, it, it potentially you could actually leave the tank where it is and move the fields further away from the stream and accomplish something. So anyway, throwing it out there. Okay, I'll, I'll definitely look into that and um, I'll talk to uh, 
I talked to the engineer that I've been in talks with uh, about getting plans, see if we can get plans for the septic along with testing everything and see what we can do and look at alternatives if it has to be moved. All right, thank you, Chloe. All right, I guess we're going on to the next, which is. Hey, Mark. Does, yes, ma'am. Um, are we going to do a December meeting or do you want to give is so Chloe oh, yeah. time that she has to get this information? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we were wondering whether we should. I guess planning is not doing a December meeting. Planning is doing one. Zoning is not doing one. OK, I mean, I would say if we if something comes onto the agenda, uh, we should do a meeting. OK, just so we know how much time, so, you know, if Chloe wanted to, you know, yep. needed more time. OK, no problem. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Chloe. Thank you. Um, can we try Desmond Fish? Yeah, we're going to bring in Jennifer and Anita Prentice. Hi, can you hear me? Sorry. Hi. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> is Tim Rasick on this call? I just was wondering who's on our board. Um, if he is, I'd bring yeah, him on. Yeah. Sure, I'll let him in too. Sure. Thank you. Um, so we submitted our plans for the October meeting, and I apologize again for missing that meeting. Um, but I know that some of the planning or the Cons conservation committee were able to meet with Mike Roush, who's also um, a co-chair with Tim on our sustainability committee for the libraries. Um, project that we're proposing. It's a walking path and solar project on the library's property. Um, and so I don't know how familiar you are with that proposal already, or if you'd like me to make a brief presentation about it um, here. We actually did meet out on the site and I think most of us have a, a good idea of what's going on there. I believe everybody concur. Yep. Great, thank you. Um, can I answer any questions that you had about the permitting or? I mean, I, I guess my own immediate uh, feeling on it was it's a great project. <laughs> I, I have no objections to it at all. I, <laughs> I love solar and the fact that he said that, that it looks like you're going to be getting something like 60, 70 percent of the power for the library from this array. That's, That's the tremendous. goal. Yeah. Yep. Tremendous. Um, the, there was one question there, was, there were a couple of questions at the site visit about screening and about the location of the little bridge and how that was going to be treated. But I mean, my sense was that every, we were pretty much in, we all agreed that it's great. But I'll throw it out there to the board. What do you guys all think? Andy, how about you first? Yeah, I, I really had, uh, I had no problem with the project. I mean, the more that the uh, solar panels can be uh, screened, the happier I would be, but I, I think it's a good project too. Andy, when you say screening, do you mean from the back or from the front? Um, just so the, I know. The less that one sees of it on the whole, like from, you know, uh, from like the different roads, nine and uh, 403 mm -hmm. um, would probably be better. I don't think you can completely screen it um, because you are putting it in a field. Well, they're pretty low, I believe, right? What, what's the height of the panels? Yeah, it's one one panel. One it's a panel single high. panel, yeah. And one of the reasons that we kept the project so um, to just sixty percent of our needs is to try and address that concern specifically, so that it wouldn't have a huge visual impact on the property. Right, but the actual height of the of the panel is about what six feet off the ground, the top of the panel. I believe so. Yeah, it's just a single solar panel. So, you know, in terms of what Andy's saying, screening from the, the adjacent roads, you wouldn't need a very, you'd need bushes essentially, you know, yeah. you know like, which could be kept back away from the arrays. Mm -hmm. um, anybody else? I Jane? remember, I actually remember seeing the, um, the prototypes like maybe over a year and a half ago. So I'm very excited because I remember this was the one that I chose. <laughs> uh, <laughs> full, full disclosure. But no, um, it sounds like it's very minimal disturbance when you're, where you're building the bridge over the street. 
Mark, I, <clears throat> Mark, I thought it was uh, one of the really very compelling projects I've seen in a public space here in Phillipstown. Uh, I think it's going to be a great addition. Uh, is it perfect? Not quite. Is it really, really good? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, and I'm, I'm enormously impressed, given the limited resources the library has, uh, that even with the support and what's been raised for it, it's able to do as much as it is. I think it'll be terrific for this community. Thanks, Jen. Agreed. Thank you. I think we, Max, we also mentioned uh, something that Eric was interested in with the Audubon Society, a partnership with that uh, like kind of nature area there. Yeah, I mean, I think I brought up during both of the uh, times that I visited the site, um, one with the board and without, that uh, I think there would be a huge benefit of putting a condition in this permit to do a native gardens, wild like wildflower wildlife gardens um, along the edges of the outflow of uh, that's on the south uh, western portion of the library property to kind of compensate for the disturbance that's going to be permanent within the wetland itself. Uh, I mean that could also add on to Andy's point of doing native plantings elsewhere. Um, to benefit other portions of the property as well. Uh, but a plan that incorporates those two features, I think would offset any of the concerns of permanently putting a boardwalk and solar panels and a utility line um, within a regulated area, in my mind, uh, especially because the project um, focuses on, you know, alternative energy sources as well as education. I agree with that. If, if if you can make that addition, I think that it you've taken a good project and made it a great one. That is something we did talk with Eric about, I know, during his tenure at the Constitution Marsh, and it was always a project that was sort of in the future. So I think it would be nice to get something going with it. We do have native plants um, throughout the site. Um, if you look at the full site plan, so there's a pollinator garden and some other native plantings that we're doing in the reading garden. Um, so we are, that is a goal of ours with this project already. Um, so I think it makes sense um, to try and incorporate that into the um, outflow. The only question that I had from our um, building supervisor, Max, on that was just about the maintenance um, for plantings like that along the stream, because we do, that's a main drainage um, stream for the library, like all of our drainage systems through the whole property feed into that. And so keeping it clear is also a priority for us. Um, and I just wondered if you had any thoughts on that, um, how we can incorporate that into our- Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, in my, I mean, obviously this is, there are probably a thousand ways to do this, but in my mind, it would be planting along the upper edges of that outflow and nothing within, nothing within the, the water, whatever that, you know, you would call that the water course there. Um, itself and you could probably kind of feather the plantings to things that were more low growing perennial flowers out to taller you know dogwoods and things like that mm -hmm. um, farther away from that area to keep it open um, so I mean that's kind of up to who, whoever is designing that to figure out but that would be my my idea and the maintenance would be relatively low and then you could you could go in in the winter time and remove anything that may have died back. Right. But I, during the growing season, I don't think it would be an issue. It would help with water absorption in that area. Great. Bob, you want to chime in? Um, yeah, no, I, I support the project. I mean, again, like I thought the garden would be a great addition. That's why I you know, mentioned it to, to, to Max to outline it. He knew the details more than I. But, um, but otherwise, I think it's fine. And, uh, you know, some, I think I mentioned on the site, you know, just kind of some bushes to kind of break it up a little bit. So it's just not like one big wall, like when you're looking out the windows from the, from the library as well, or when you're just kind of walking in the garden in the back that they just built, just so it's not, you know, like this big monolith out there. Yeah. Um, let me ask one last question. The, is there going to be monitoring equipment set up on this so you can see what the generation is at you know, as you move along? 
Um, I don't think that's in the site plan itself. I think that would be something that we would have to incorporate into it. Um, but Tim, I don't know if you have any insight into that. That's not something that I'm aware of right now. I mean, yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Tim. I think that Oh, yeah, that's the man from Mars. <laughs> all right, Tim, we can't hear you at all. I don't know if you can hear me, but I think that's a scratch. Um, the reason Are I you talking, was, the question, was the question monitoring the amount of, of electricity produced? Yes, Anita, what I, I actually uh, have a, think a system was going to see the, Jim, can you hear me? The power that's being generated for so it could be a learning tool as well. He just said the word that I was looking for. I, I, I feel like this is an opportunity for kids mm -hmm. to really understand the potential for this clean energy, you know, and I think we have a project which we just took apart and we're going to put back together again where there was remote monitoring equipment that the client was able to look on their phone and see how much power the thing was making, oh. see if it was positive or negative at any time. And if there was some, if there was a display that when the kids came into the library or even if they could tap, you know, look on their phone, if there's a website where they could look, I, I mean, it seems, it all seems kind of hokey, but if there's some way to really let them, it make it easy for them to see how cool this is and how efficient it is and how, that we need to do this next year. <laughs> you know, everybody needs one of these in their backyard and on their roof. I don't know. Great idea. My own pet peeve, sorry. No, it's definitely one of the goals of the project is to make it educational for people and really demonstrate best practices in this kind of work. So it would be, it sounds like a great thing to incorporate. Well, so are we, uh, we need to vote on a permit on this one, approval? I believe that's where we are. If we are, can I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion. Second. There we well, go. Would it be a conditional approval upon the additional items we discussed? I guess upon, yes, your stuff. You're right, Max. I'm sorry. Your stuff is in addition to that. The, the screening. Is that something you uh, the library feels comfortable just moving forward with, with a conditional permit, or they would like to propose something to the board? Before, before coming to a final conclusion on what they'd accept. I feel comfortable with it. I don't know, Anita, if you feel like the board has to approve that or. Um... No, no, I think, um, I mean, I guess my only question would be, uh, I think the suggestion of planting near the water course is a, is a great one. As far as screening is concerned, um, we tried in coming up with this design, working with the landscape architects to have a solar display that would be attractive to look at. And because one of the problems is people want solar, but they don't want to see the panels. And um, so we, we, we really tried to create something that actually will not be um, unpleasant to look at. And I think to try to put too much screening, um, particularly in the front, uh, would really defeat one of the one of the main objectives as Tim, as we just talked about a learning um, opportunity and Mark, as you just uh, talked about getting people excited about the potential. So as far as the screening, I'm just raising, I'm just reacting and saying, um, you want a lot of screening, a little bit of screening. Um, uh, anyway, that seems to me kind of a vague mandate. <laughs> mm -hmm. So maybe some clarification on that would be great. Max, was your thinking mostly screening from the, the roadways or I mean if I, we, that I, to, to be honest with you that was not part of my uh, um, recommendation initially I think that was something that Andy uh, had brought up so I yes. think if he if he took the lead on that yes that'd I thought be more appropriate you're right you're right Andy do you agree was that something that you had initially thought about I, I had proposed it yes I mean I don't if nobody wants to have that done, I'm fine. I just think there is a way, and I think it would help the project by distracting the eye a little bit, I think is a, a good way to put it. I think breaking it up in spots, just 
I mean, I'm not saying block the whole thing, but just, you know, like, so it's just not always in, in view. I, I, you know, I haven't seen the, in reality, the design that you put together, like in real life, but I've seen other sites that are site in New Jersey and in Pearl River. And it looks horrible with these, these monstrous, you know, panels there. I know you're not designing that, but that's what I have in my head. So. <laughs> So. It's like we're trying to avoid. <laughs> I know, I know, I, I know. Yeah. But <laughs> understood. Solar panels don't work unless they're out there catching the sun. I mean, that's the problem. Right, right. Yeah, yeah but I was thinking, you know, with this, you know, it's like blow bushes or something just to kind of break right. it up a little bit, and it's far enough away that it's not going to block the light. But you know, maybe not a direct look, you know, view of it. Right, right. right. No, they're they're. There Sorry. is our, our intention to plant along the along the um, the the array in certain places. So I think that's shown on the plan. Um, you know what might be helpful? I mean, I don't know if the uh, software that was used on those plans is capable of it, but if you could if you could send us something like a view from a couple of spots, what it would actually look like right. looking at it. it might I was going to actually ask if I could share my screen because I think I have a couple of views. I don't have them pulled up right this okay. second, but I can show you just a couple of drawing sketches of it and yeah. like from different spots on the property. That'd be awesome, sure. Um, if you give me two seconds, I'm just going to pull it up on my screen so you don't have to look at everything else I'm looking at. <laughs> um, but I think I have them sort of relatively ready to look at. Let me see if I can find them. Take your time. Um, so I think, let's see. I can remember how to share screen here. Um, this is the sketch um, actually right around the break in the panels that the, the wetlands, um, where they're uh, just over the wetlands. Um, this is uh, where the moon path sort of comes through the panels and this is looking back at the building so you can see the building on the left in the distance and then the people to scale. So this is like front. standing on 9D looking up the castle would be up behind us it would be up. In uh, the, okay. the castle would actually be to your left um, so looking out across the field this is actually like in the middle of the array so this is actually this little sketch down here you can see a little better Oh yeah. Um, uh -huh. where it's at um, sort of it's the break in the array about okay. here. Um, I don't know if I'm being blind, but I can't see a single panel, so it looks pretty good to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the back of it, so you're sort of seeing how it sort of curves around and around the topography on the property. I mean, that's beautiful. Um, I, I thought that was a path at first. That curvy thing is the panels. Yeah, yeah, that's no, this beautiful. is the, the panel, and it's it's supposed to move with the property, so it has some some topography elements to it as well. And then there's one other sketch, I think, from the building. So this is from, this is looking out from the back reading garden here um, by the maple tree. And this is sort of looking out towards the panels. And this is the the blue ribbon of a panel yeah. here in the distance. So it's, I mean, it's, the goal is to make it as low impact as possible. Um, and also to make it just a little more aesthetically pleasing than your average, what I would call a graveyard of solar panels, which is what we're trying to avoid with this project. So exactly what Rob was talking about. Yeah. Um, yep. I don't know what you guys think. I mean, I thought that was. I, yeah. I truly think it's beautiful. I I think it. Um, I remember looking at the plants a long time ago and just seeing it was like kind of like a work of art. Like, you know, when you go to store and you have like. Yep. All right. Well, uh, so the only contingency on the permit would just would be the stuff that Max talked about. Uh, I guess the stream plant things. Then is that are we agreed on that? Yes. Okay. So there you have it. All in favor? Aye. 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 I would say that's unanimous. Great. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank so you much. to the board. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Thanks. Um, okay. So what else do we have, Kelly? Uh, we were, I think, I think, Neil, it's your magic moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're on, you're mute. Oh, there, there we go. <clears throat> Boy, tough. 
It's tough going last, and it's tough following solar panels. I'm telling you, <laughs> because this is not, this is nowhere near as sexy as solar panels. I'm telling you. They, uh, let me switch back over. I'll make this quick. I know what it's like waiting for the last guy to go. So, um, yeah, so I just, I, I like starting these things with a, with an overhead just to kind of let everybody get their bearings. This is looking north over the Glenwood property. You see, uh, and if you can't follow my cursor, let me know, because I also have a drawing option here where I can circle things. But um, so we have Jordan Pond, which is on the uh, east side of the property. And on the west side, we have Perkins, Perkins Lake, essentially. Um, <clears throat> but this application is concentrating on the dam at Jordan Ponds. I'll just give you a little backstory here. I put in this other panel. You can, I put in this second photo if you, if you notice where the water level is here, because anytime you talk about dams, people, you know, the first thing you wanna do is say it's a repair, it's not an emergency situation, and, um, and our water level is down as per requested by New York State Dams and the DEC. So you can see where the water level has dropped over the past year. These pictures are about a year apart. Um, and this, this pond now is used to irrigate our upper CSA field. So all the water that goes in that we use here and we water livestock over in this field here, all that water comes out of Jordan Pond. So where do you start? It's the engineering assessment. I, I, forgive me, I know some of you might know the rules. I always like to start with a statute. The controlling statute requires the owner of a dam or the operator to uh, do an engineering assessment every 10 years. So we, we were behind, we had some uh, changes here at Glenwood. We finally started working on it in 2017. It has been filed with, it was filed with the DEC and their feedback came back with, um, with, um, classic with new classifications it, it, this is just a um, we're basically talking about a which is a Jordan dam is a considered a low hazard dam so it, it which is I should say lower maintenance um, but you still have to you know you still have to do things periodically and then and and they they study the hydrology and it's the hydraulics or hydrology of the lake of the pond here and they um essentially don't they, they this was two issues here first the, the the engineers didn't like the angle of the training walls and i'll get into that in a second and then um in january of 2017 i'm sorry 2019 if you see this blue arrow and I think you can actually see a little bit of moisture here. We were having some weeping and it's called piping. So you have root cavities and the roots, um, when the, the roots get in there and eventually you have, you know, little, little holes sort of working their way from either side of the dam and eventually they connect. And it was not, it, it was not a, we actually, we, we didn't really even notice it <clears throat> right away, but you can see that it was spongy. Uh, in this in this one area where the blue arrow is so we you know so this is so between that and the engineers assessment we have to remedy a couple of things and um so we filed with this this is our feedback from the engineers over you know different repairs some of them are simple some of them are not and this schedule has been retarded a little bit by the covid um it was shutting down the DEC. It took me forever to get back and forth with the DEC on this. And this is the work area. So um, this is the area of impact. And in your package, in the e-package, and of course, I'll, I'll send you all hard copies eventually, but you, uh, is this, this is good. The, the stormwater report is worth reading if, just, just to really get up to speed on where we are with this. <clears throat> and I've got the the drawings, which you should have received a copy. And let me see if I can zoom in enough. Um, so this is essentially the area that they're interested in. And, you know, we've got our silt barriers. It's very detailed plan. 
But the bottom line is, let me see, you know what? Let me go to this photo here. Let me jump ahead. Um, we've got this. I just, again, like to start back and then zoom in. And this is the area in question. So these are your training walls. And they do just what it sounds like. They, they, they're, 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 they're designed to deflect the water towards the spillway. So the, engine, the, the plan does not call to widen the spillway. It calls for moving the angle of these training walls um, to make them more, is it acute when you move them that way? Acute? Yeah, to, to um, sort of move it so that the walls are uh, funneling more water in towards the spillway. So it's, um, that's, that's essentially what the permit's for. The, the size and the shape of the walls will be very much the same, but the angle's different. And so the, what it calls for is the construction. And this is, again, this is all in the report. What it calls for, let me find myself a highlighter here. Um, what it calls for is the construction of a coffer dam and they'll, they'll do one, one side each. So you put some steel plates in like that, you pump the water out, you fix the wall. And then when you're done with that side, you build one over here. Um, essentially take the same one and then move it over. So that keeps the water uh, out of your project. Um, and then another important thing to note here. So remember I said there were two issues. So one was the training walls and the other one is this low, is called a low water outlet which like the training walls is exactly what you'd think. And, and I, was, I, I got a picture of it here in this shot. And that's, that's the inlet for the low, what's the low water outlet. And this pipe right here runs through, let me get rid of this, hang on a second. This pipe runs through the berm below the spillway and comes out right here. I'm sorry, comes out right here. I'm gonna do that again, because that's important. It comes in through here and comes out right there. Now, there was a, a the, the, the dam failed in 1984, apparently. Uh, not catastrophic failure, but they had a similar issue in 1984 and there's no documentation of what they did. So our thinking is that perhaps they didn't use the right backfill I don't know, that was a long time ago. Maybe it was just age, um, it, it just failed over time. But this is where this is where we're seeing the weeping is right around here. So we're, we're thinking that something might be compromised in this channel that's holding this pipe. Um, but this this is the area, and it really is only, it's only about this big. But, you know, when you're holding 11 million gallons, you don't want to mess around, so we lowered the level of the lake. We took all the precautions that the DEC recommended and now we're in the permitting phase. So, um, you know, one other thing that's kind of important to show. Um, so I sort of put, mocked it up because I really want you to understand how this low water outlet works because that's really the thing. And there we've got a picture of it and it's controlled by a T handle, works like a curb key where you turn off the water to your house. It's uh, the same idea. So we can, it's an eight inch pipe that we can open up or that's how we control the level of the lake. And the good thing about this, and it works now, but the good thing about having it revised with a, with a newer pipe and a, a bigger pipe and, a, and a, 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 a newer valve is that should we have a storm event, you know, we all probably remember Sandy um, if we can, we can really just dump the level of this lake in, 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 no, in, in just a few days by using this new mechanism. Uh, so when we see a big storm coming, actually both lakes, that's our protocol from the DEC is to get down there, open it up, and you're creating storage essentially. Um, so that's, that's where we're at. Let me go back up to that first one because I like this picture. Um, yeah, the idea is lower the lake, create the storage, and then um, control the control the water as it moves through the property. It's kind of it's a it's a it's a big thing up here at Glenwood to uh, you know control 
the amount of water, uh, control the water as it moves through the property. The watershed area is enormous. Um, so again, that's just it. And, and I, you, you've got the packets, and, and uh, but I just wanted to give you the backstory, um, let you have a little bit to think about when you're reading the plans. The repair itself is not that complicated. I mean, let me go back here again, the area of impact is 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 not that big um we're well we have to you know carve this out we have to take this out sorry take this out replace it with concrete and then you can see in here um you see how the surface is, is sort of loose field stone put in there without any real grout or caulking or anything so no, they're not crazy about that either. Their th thinking is that it builds up too much resistance as it goes through the spillway through here. So they've asked us to line it with shockcrete, which is which is this concrete that you put in under pressure and it just sort of blasts and sticks itself to the wall, creating less resistance. And then and in the plan also, this this bridge has to be replaced, and we need to clean up some of these large rocks that have fallen into the into the spillway so that's kind of where we're at I, I'll um, again I, I, it's 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 kind of a lot to to absorb I've been talking about this for three years so uh, but it, it's a lot there's a lot going on we are definitely are we are in the wetlands buffer. You don't get much more in the wetlands buffer than this. So we filed the, you know, the, the application includes, as you probably know, a fully full EAF, um, you know, the, the animals, the potential species. Um, we do have some trees that we need to take down along the berm, uh, which won't, which has to be timed accordingly. So um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping when you read the application that you feel like we've, we've, you know, crossed our T's and, um, but I'm, I'm sure you, you'll have some questions and I'll, I'll, I'll take any questions now also. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I would personally, I would just defer to the engineers and DEC on this for the most part, but in my limited experience with the dams that have come in front of us, the only questions I really remember were when you lower the water, what are you doing? Are you protecting the fish and whatever else is in there? Right. Norm normally, and I've, and I've had to do this in the past, you, you would have to apply to the DEC for what's called a drawdown permit. Mm -hmm. And it's not a big deal. And basically what they're doing is making sure that you're not lowering it when the turtles are trying to nest because the turtles go you know, they go under the water and then, and then they come back up. Mm -hmm. So the key is to not do that when that's, when the turtles are trying to nest, we didn't have that luxury, but this was a direct, I don't want to say order. It was a direct request from the DEC to just drop the levels, get them a foot below the spillway, mm -hmm. which, which stopped the weeping actually, which, which I, I, that's an important point also. Um, dropping the level to where it was in that last photo it, it doesn't weep, but which, which made my life a lot easier because, um, you know, I knew we, it, we, we bought us a little bit of time. I'm sorry. Did somebody have a question? I, saw uh, I, think, I think that was bleed through from Bob's, uh, Bob's link. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, Mark, to answer your question, yes, it is. Um, we we did we had to drop it down. We I don't think we were in the win in that window anyway. This, um, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's all all that. Uh, it's all part of the application. It's, it was it was, it was a challenging application, as you can imagine. Um, that's really the only question I have. I have to admit, uh, not a lot of knowledge in this area. So, anybody else have any questions or comments? Um, I think that we should look pretty closely at our chapter 93 regs too, because I think that uh, we have an exemption from town permits. Uh, this would be, this could be considered an excluded activity um, per our code as a uh, repair project. Um, 
in, the, in one of the beginning sections of the chapter, it specifically calls out any dam maintenance of dams that were in existence uh, prior to the date that the wetlands codes were enacted. So, um, like Mark said, I think that deferring to DEC's ruling on this and, and permitting and setting the environmental standards is gonna be important. I don't know legally how much we can weigh in other than that, we, obviously any sort of, uh, you know, malfeasance during construction that would cause illicit discharge and pollution downstream, um, you know, obviously would be frowned upon. So I think you're doing all the right things in terms of uh, site control and protections, it seems like. So I think the, the board, we should look at that closer um, as to whether or not the town would even require a permit for this. It's always good to ask. Yeah. <laughs> if even if they're even if you you're much better off running it by you and rather than someone coming in and saying, "Hey, what what are they doing up there?" you know. Yeah, uh, 100%. There is there is some language. I'm not unfamiliar with what you're talking about, Max. There is some language in there about imminent danger to life and property which you know, we're talking about 11 million gallons. So I understand that. Um, but if you've been up here, there's no water in that. There's barely enough water in there for doing the field. So um, um, I think we're okay for now. All right. Thank so you thanks. very much. It was interesting. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, do we have anything else? Do we have, we don't have minutes, right, Kel? Um, Max, did you want to let everybody know what's going on with Wahano? Yeah, sure. Uh, after the last meeting, um, Mark, Mike, and I drafted a letter uh, to Jose stating basically what the board had reiterated um, during October's meeting. And after submitting that letter to Jose, and I, I believe the conservation board got a copy um, as well, uh, he had a lawyer contact the town. And so the town attorney is now going to um, be in discussion with him on how to rectify um, the situation moving forward and, and for him to uh, satisfy the violations on his property. So I haven't heard anything else back besides confirmation from Jose that his lawyer is going to be contacting the town. So that's where things stand right now uh, on with that property. All right. Um, and I guess, Max, if you wouldn't mind, could you take the lead on setting up a meeting with uh, Neil Zuckerman about sure. 3622? Yeah, I, I, I think everyone saw that planning board referral uh, via email as well. Um, and I spoke with Ron today, you know, asking him why uh, it was referred to the conservation board. It didn't seem like there were any actual administrative triggers uh, other than the site itself is going to be used as a store a landscape material storage facility it seems like with road salt and mulch and and items like that um, that could have the potential to wash away into a dot right-of-way with with catch basins and culverts that would be piped um, into clove creek so uh, ron sent it our way to provide suggestions to the planning board as to um, basically mitigating any potential impacts into the future from things like uh, runoff uh, onto piles of salt that are uncovered and, and uh, other items like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's, that's kind of the short story of it. I don't think we have much say otherwise in terms of uh, permitting. Uh, I don't believe we would need to issue any permits for that project, so. All right, well, I think we did it, kids, unless there's something else. I have a question on the letter to Logano um, and the town attorney. So, I mean, basically, what is what is the resolution at that point? So the, do they come back to the conservation board, the town, town with their proposal for us to to see what they're deciding on? Or no, Right now, I'm not sure. I, I honestly, I didn't speak to their attorney. I wanted the, the town. I wanted them to speak directly with the town attorney. Um, oh, no, right. I, yeah. Yeah. But they, what we had proposed essentially is that there's nothing else that's going to be what we what we had initially outlined in that letter was that they needed to bring the site back to the condition that it was in right. when we agreed on and issued a permit uh, for the, the work that was going to happen on that property. Um, 
on top of that, we asked them to test the septic to make sure that it wasn't compromised. And we also asked them to replenish their escrow accounts um, so that we can monitor that work. Um, and then at that point, once all of that had been rectified and their violations had been lifted, uh, then we could decide whether or not we'd want to hear them again for a proposal. Um, that's how it was phrased. We, I, I believe the letter wasn't even phrased that, you know, once these items are completed, then we'd hear you again. We just denied them outright the opportunity to, to present another plan to the board until those items were, were addressed. Okay. So. Okay. Thanks. Yep. All right. So I guess if, uh, if that's it for tonight, can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.